Hello, hello and welcome. My name is Maggie Rose Cunningham and this is Magic in Mind where we align with the stars, we explore our runes, we get our magic mojo going for the week ahead and in this case for the month ahead and a little bit further on as well because I'm going to be doing two parts to this session. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the star crafting with the runes challenge which is coming up in September. It is a free challenge hosted in the hearth space which I'm very excited about. And we're going to be doing our new moon intention setting and I will be um, offering to you a, a process that you can use. It's particularly apt for the new moon, but you can use it at other times as well. And it supports luck building. Um, in the Norse, luck was called Haminya. In the Anglo-Saxon, it was known as Megan. And I'm going to be um, sharing with you a little technique that you can use to um, move into luck building through the course of a lunar cycle or through the course of a, of a, of a week or, or even a day. Um, so we've got those lovely two things to, to come along. And anyone who is joining me here live, I will be doing our stay and play session afterwards where you can share your rune, the rune that is um, present for you at the moment, perhaps the one that you've drawn for your new moon lunar cycle. And I will do a mini reading for you. If you are watching the recording, please do um, type in hashtag replay. Let me know um, what lands for you in the session. And, and please do answer the questions as well, because we will keep... Um, and keep the conversation going as well so you know you don't have to feel like oh I've, I'm, i wasn't there for the live and so i've missed out you haven't missed out share your room um share what's going on for you share what lands for you during the course of this session so i've got a question for you which is um what is your zodiac sun sign what's your zodiac sun sign so pop in the chat what your zodiac sun sign is and uh, and the thing is that apparently, according to, to, to the data, and who am I to question the data, 90% of people in the world know what that, their zodiac sun sign is. How about your sun rune? So I know that some people who are here and are going to be um, watching this, um, either coming on the live or the recording, are going to know what their sun rune is. But I'm betting that quite a few of you don't know what your sun rune is. So the zodiac system well, is based on the Babylonian astrological system. It was created about 2,500 years ago. It's an old system. But a lot of what we use now has been... You know, um, work through, created, all the sort of detailed charts that we can get. You know, 2,500 years ago, they did not have computers doing all of these things for them. It was a much more complex undertaking. Um, probably would only have been undertaken for people in royal households, you know, like very rich, able to afford you know, a court astrologer, let's say. Now, there is a very, very short little extract. It's, it's, it's a story that's shared at the towards the end of the poetic edda and it's about a hero and his name was Helgi and the story is about his birth and it talks about um where where he was born and sort of um the the night sky and sort of storms raging and things are coming and this baby is born and it is said that Nornir like fates gathered and they took golden threads and they strung them across the moon's hall to set the fate of Helgi. And we don't know anything more other than that. But whenever I see that and I think about golden threads being strung across the moon's hall by the fates, I sort of always think to myself, well, you know, I think they were doing something similar. We don't know what it was. We don't, we simply don't have the records they were destroyed or it was a, um, still a time when things were handed down by the, by orally rather than being written down at that point. And um, so there's a little sort of tantalising piece there that says there may have been an astrological system. And then we have the runes themselves. If you look at some of the runes, there are a number of the runes that speak to us. Like here we go, Dargaz is the rune of day. You know, it literally means day or the cycle of um, light and dark coming through with, um, with day. We've got another one here, that's Yera, the, the year with the summer and the winter or Sumar and Vetra as they were known. Um, all sorts of, you know, you can sort of keep on going through them. There's the sun, Suelo, the rune of the sun itself. So much around um, time 
and space and the movements of the of the stars and you know, the sun and we have um Tewaz as the rune of the um a guiding star, it is said, that hints at this very deep relationship that the northern ancestors would have had with time and space and with the astrological movements. But we have, what we have is very fragmented. And this is why, years ago, when I read Nigel Pennock's book, which has since been republished, which is good because it was very expensive and quite difficult to find, called um, Starcraft and Runic Astrology. No, uh, Runic Astrology, Starcraft and Timekeeping in the Northern Tradition. Apologies. And I read this book and I was didn't want to be convinced at that point. You know, I had um, I'd done my work with my zodiac astrology. I'm Taurian. I was sort of like, OK, you know, I could. I could it was OK. I was interested, let's say. I always tried to do more with um, my with my with my zodiac, you know, with my rising sign and various you know, other things. And I tried to do sort of like dance and movement and sound with them. It didn't work. But you know, I tried it. And then I sort of, you know, I looked at Penix's work and I was like, oh, no. That's, you know, so we have so little to go on. How is it possible that a system would be, um, would it would be viable and powerful? But I, you know, I sort of got a little bit hooked. I started in 2010 working with the, um, w with the sun, with the movement of the sun through the runic wheel, which is how we find out what our sun rune is. So your sun rune, imagine the ecliptic, which is what's used in um, most um, astrological traditions, use the same thing, which is the ecliptic, which is the um, the seen passage of the planets as if they're moving around the earth, which obviously they aren't, but you know that's the, the way that we work with them. And so we have this um, almost like an imaginary nine you know, of the ecliptic and everything works around that. So the, the runes are positioned around the ecliptic and the sun moves through them. And so wherever the sun was, it was in a particular segment for your particular rune at the time that you were born and that was your sun rune. And uh, my sun rune was Largu, the rune of water and the gateways between life and death. And when I felt it, it literally felt like I was like, it was like a thump in the chest you know this is this is your sun rune my um non is gift which is um created from the plate the, the hour of your birth was um urus which is a rune that was the first rune i ever worked with it was so powerful and important to me and over time i realized how powerful this system is a system of runic astrology um was and how much more i could do with it as a northern tradition practitioner how the birth rooms form a web of healing energy which is unique to me and that i can work with year on year on year and they support me to stretch in terms of my spiritual growth and they support me in my healing work and many other people who have worked with me on the birth rooms have said the same but the challenge for us is that runic astrology isn't as accessible as other forms of astrology you can't go and put your um numbers in somewhere and it generates the chart for you and it's all done and it's and it's great you know much as that would be wonderful it's not um, available at the moment so I've done the next best thing which is to you know have offer a package which means that I can do all the calculations for you but equally it's you know what does it mean how does it work you know these are the sorts of questions that come up which is why I am launching Starcrafting with the Runes which is a um, free challenge it's going to be hosted in the hard space and you know, as your wish is always my command we did Rune Quest um, back earlier in the year and I got lots of lovely feedback from it but one of the things that people said is they said we'd like an integration week we'd like to do a week and then an integration week and then a week and then an integration week so that's what we're doing for Starcrafting with the Rune so instead of it being a three week challenge it'll be a six week challenge but only three weeks worth of content so you know I will be posting a challenge every day during our active week same as happens with um, RuneQuest for those of you who did RuneQuest and it's going to be helping you to explore runic astrology to explore your birth runes to explore the the halls and the hearths of the AC Nure, and to say you know is this for me do I want to take this further and then of course there are lots of opportunities for you to take this further and I will be posting about that so before we go on to our you know, normal, business as normal, we will be resumed and um, we'll look at the, the new moon intention setting and luck building. I should say that for the first time in four years, I want to say, I am taking a break from magic in mind. I'm normally here every Monday, except with just a few exceptions. But this um, month through August, this is the only magic in mind that I am doing. And then I'll be back in September and we'll be building up for our challenge. Hooray! Um, 
But what I will be doing is lots of um, posts and information for you about the birth runes and runic astrology so that you can start to feel into it and think, you know, is the challenge for me? Is this really, really what I want to um, to be doing? Which I really hope that you'll say yes to that. You can join this challenge whether you are absolutely new to the runes, whether you know the runes really well, whether you've done Awaken with me, Mastery with me, um, whether you're on birth rune soul journey with me and you're actually like training to be a, like a runic astrology yourself. Um, it's it's there for everyone to sort of say what's my next level with um with my runes and with the rune, with runic astrology. So I won't be here for the next three weeks. But obviously, if you're in Sooner Star Wheel, you'll still be getting your um, waxing and waning moon meditations and your full moon meditations. And there's lots of videos to watch. So I'll still be sharing stuff. I'll still be about like in the hearth space at least every now and then so I won't be leaving you um, entirely. The other thing I wanted to say that is that through September um, in terms of programs and trainings we'll be very much focusing on rune healing. So if, some, if rune healing is something that you're really really interested in um, then please do sign up for the Healing with the Runes Masterclass which is happening on the 3rd of September if you want to um, deepen into your practice if you were already done awaken with me we are doing our healing for others um training is in september as well and um, amplify we have our reclaim your healer retreat coming up as well for those of you who are either thinking about amplify or you know that your healer needs a little bit of um tlc perhaps you've been offering healing for a long period of time and you want to uh, replenish recoup connect in with your power as a healer more strongly so there's lots available to you coming up in september so keep an eye out for those you can go and you can visit the events and goodies page and see the how to sign up there and you'll notice that there is a purple banner at the top of www.maginrose.com um, at the moment where it says sign up for star crafting with the runes challenge hit the button it will take you to a little bit more information hit the button there and then we will send you an email with more information about the challenge and how it's going to work and then we'll send you some further emails as the challenge starts to get a little bit closer. And then you will get emails as you're in the challenge, which will say, this is what we're doing today. This is what we're, this is where we are now. This is when you can come and we've got our live session and we're doing prize givings and things like that. So get yourself signed up for, for that and have a look at, in the events and goodies for um, our um, formal training events through September. Okay, so here we are in the new moon. Um, so I'm going to invite you today, we're going to be looking at um, the new moon from the perspective of, of luck building. I always think that August somehow is a really nice time for luck building. You know, it's like the harvest time and we are reaping and, and, and it's that time to sort of fill your, fill your coffers. And as I said, in the, in the Norse, luck was known as Haminya. It was a force that was said to be sort of attached on, like, to your soul. In, in many ways and it was also said to be something that could be passed through the generations or you know, um, from, th from the dead to the living. Your Haminya isn't something you can take with you, it's a force, of, it's a life force in itself, very much associated with the rune um, Feyu, which I will attempt to find for you in my pack. And you literally, when you've got that feeling of um, like tingly excitement, anticipation, if you meet someone and they're glowing, they're sort of glowing with that life force energy, they're said to have a lot of Haminya present for them. And people wanted to uh, work with, you know, literally you would say, you know, that leader has Haminya, you know, they have luck with them. I will um, offer my services to them. I'll be part of their community would be the way that you would see it so how many were said to know this is where we get the idea of leaders and then their sons and daughters will be um leaders as well because the haminya is passed down but we can also build our haminya this is something that for those of you who are um heathens or working as um, a sartru um will be will be familiar with we're not going to be using the symbol right though um which i do in um awaken on the mastery programs um, here we go here's for you we're going to be using our the parts of the magical self and our runes um today to do a little bit of luck building building and as i said in anglo-saxon there's that force was called megan so what i'd like you to to think about is when we think about um setting intentions which i like to do during a lunar cycle i like to say okay how what are intentions do i want to set for the coming lunar cycle but it can feel a little bit like, oh, what is it that I should do? I might go and look at my 
these are all of the events that I've got coming up or these are the things that I need to do in order to keep my business running or these are you know, my child's bedroom needs painting or something like that and it, it's the to-do list isn't it which we'll, we'll cover on a separate occasion let me know if you want to know about sacred to-do lists and what Odin has to say about that but I'd like us to think about intentions in terms of thinking about how can I invite in more luck into my life um, today so some of the ways you can think about, okay, what would feel lucky to me? What would a really great month feel like to me? It might be that you're on a healing journey. It would be more um, health and well-being. It might be, um, I want time to read and explore. I'm doing a course and I want more time to do that. Or it might be like me that um, I've taken some time off and I want to really build a sort of delicious, luscious space for me and my, and my boys to have great um, experiences together. And I'm working on that and how can I make that happen? So it, it part it, part of it might be a conscious thing about thinking what l might a lucky month feel like to me. Now, if you've got Suma Star Wheel, hold on, let me see if I've got my copy to hand. Where did I put it? Ah, oh, there it is. If you've got Suma Star Wheel, one of the exercises that I'm, I offer to people is I say, um, like draw your rune, obviously, and then I we put it on our. I've, I've put mine already. I've got through Thursday this month. I've drawn my rune, and then what I've done is I've written um, words that were what would i like to invite in that feels resonant and congruent with thurisaz it's sort of what i felt into um so i was you know, a little bit of asking a rune first to say you know what feels good to me so for you thinking about your rune of the month or your rune of the week or your rune of the day you can um absolutely like select your rune and then have a play in that way sort of say okay no, what have I got here? I've got the Rado rune. So I select my, my Rado rune. And then I think, okay, so what comes to mind straight away for me with the Rado rune? That sort of sense of rhythm and ritual. Uh, but what would I love to do around that? Oh, you know, I would love to do more more dance maybe or more movement or I'd like to travel more. And then you might look at, okay, so what opportunities are there for me to do that this month? You know, oh, is there a is there a class that I can go to like near me, or is there some music that I can create a playlist for myself and have a bit of a dance there? Or can I get my drum out and do some drumming rhythm? You know, so you, there are lots of different things that you can do that will associate themselves with with radio. If it's the you know if you're thinking about it with travel, it might be where can I go to? What new adventures can I have? For radio is often about rhythms. It might be about setting habits for yourself. What are habits that are going to nurture me and replenish me? So you can work with your room as a partner in your intention setting so you can absolutely do this free form you can just say you know i know what it is that i might need to bring more in um of through the coming month and you can start to play with that and write that down or you can start to work with your rune um to, to support you um in doing that now i like to think about this process of of luck building and this is the sort of opening to luck stage as drawing in each part of the magical self so this first part that we're talking about i see this as being a combination of the seer and of the mystic so the seer feels into that sort of alignment with self and the alignment with weird so if you look at my um my thurisaz rune and i looked at my thurisaz rune and if you don't know your runes very well you can just go to pop to my web pages and go and have a look at the rune that you've drawn or you can use the mag and rose rune generator just um could do um mag and rose rune of the day and that should come up for you if you do a google search and um, select a rune and then you can go and have a read and you can say okay what qualities of this rune feel good to me right now now this is where the the, com the combination comes in because it's the mystic who's saying okay so what might be possible you know draw a room like see what's what's available to me and then it's the seer that goes okay and um, what feels like a real yes from me and this is inside right down in the tummy you know that um is it a does that, do i feel nothing do i feel numb no oh, no that doesn't feel good do I feel like, yes, you know, that's a real yes. So you start to, this is us, our developing our seer, is knowing when we want to say yes to something and knowing when we want to say no to something. Any form of reading that you that you do um, is using that, um, the mystic to sort of explore outwards and say what's possible and available, and then the seer to bring that back and say, and what's right for me now? 
Now you can do this with with anything in in your in your life. You can say, okay, that reach into that. What might that feel like? What might that give me? And then the seer goes, um, yes or no. So you can do this with your runic astrology as well. You can start to look at, okay, so what do my what do the planetary movements? How do they support me? How might I take advantage of the partnership that's happening at the moment between Thurisaz and Ansu? So we've got a new moon in Thurisaz. We've got Suna's chariot in Thurisaz. We've got Frigg's chariot and Odin's chariot in Ansu. So that we've got these two complementary energies or conflicting energies potentially um, between um, Ansu, the rune of the voice and the rune of you know, the, the the sky gods, and Thurisaz, the rune of the heart and the passions and the rune of the Thorsa, the giants. You know, how might I work with, with them? How might I get more balance for myself between um, my heart and my mind, for example, might come through. So you can look at runic astrology and you can say, okay, so what themes does my do the planetary movements offer to me? And then what might I do with them? And what this does is we have alignment with the self that the seer supports, but we also have alignment with what's happening outside. And this is an important piece. So um, the two pieces that um, the seer and the mystic support are um, alignment and opportunism. You could also say sort of exploration and, and attunement, but it's that idea that I'm sort of tuning in to what's available there. I'm stretching out to what's available and then I'm feeling into what's right, what feels aligned and, and correct for me and what feels aligned and correct um, in terms of what's out there that resonates with me. So it's alignment with the self and alignment with what's happening outside. So your, your seer and your mystic uh, create this space of play where you start to say, what might luck feel like? And then what's out there to support me in building that luck? What do the um, planetary movements, for example, suggest to me that on my own, I might not have spotted? You no, know, comes through um, strongly with our uh, with our seer and our mystic there. Now, in this process, we start with the seer and the mystic. We start with our sort of exploration and tuning in, and you know what feels really right. But that doesn't stop, and this is important. So, if you're working through the month, what I wouldn't suggest you do is to say, "Okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'm not going to change. I'm not going to shift. Nothing is going to alter during the course of the month." Feel into the, the, the energy. So if you do your, I've got my rune of the month and then I've written some some words, you know, then I might create using the next part of the magical self that helped to build this um, luck spiral, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, I'm going to create some intentions for what I'm going to do to invite that, that in. But then I'm going to revisit it. So I like to do that weekly. I like to, you know, each week is one of the reasons I do Magic in Mind weekly. It sort of gives that opportunity to tune in, doesn't it? Um, what is, what's available for me now this week? So you could do it each day or you could do it each week. So there's a, um, oh look, my, my lights are flickering. Apologies for that. Um, there's a continuous, continuous process of saying, is it still a yes now from the seer? Is it a no now? And what the mystic does is the mystic provides um, opportunism, you know, which is, is a an, an really important part as you flow through the month. And this is important for luck building. So let's say you said to the universe, I um, really want to bring in, I want to bring in the passion and the pleasure and the sensuality of Thurisaz. I'm ready, I'm ready for this. And uh, bear with me one moment. I'm going to see if I can sort out these lights. Otherwise, that's a bit distracting for you, isn't it? Okay, it's the bookshelf. It's leaning against the switch in case you're thinking there's a mythical, magic, mystical and magical thing. Well, it could be, couldn't it? Um, where were we? Okay, so opportunism. So there is a, a, a video called The Lucky Town. It was created by Daring Brown. It was ages and ages ago. And he did this w wonderful experiment which shows how people who believe in luck are luckier than people who don't. Because people who believe in luck see the opportunities they go oh universe you know this will be great if this could come up it would be brilliant and then they're doing this where are those things that i really wanted to bring into my life you know they believe that they are there and then they see them whereas if you're going no 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 the universe doesn't have my back absolutely and i have to do everything through hard work and hard work alone you know you're so like laser focused on this that you can't see the universe going it's this way you know? so it's 
it's sort of part of this process the process of momentum requires us to then look for the opportunities that the universe presents to help us to fulfill the desires that we have placed out there in the world so that's the mystic okay so if we've put something out to the universe and we've said you know i really like to um you know ex be more in the, the the powerful positive velvet red delicious passionate energy of thuris as please and i'm going to be looking out for the opportunities that you're going to pass my way i think the universe does say a little bit around them and and are you going to be doing your bit yes is the correct answer to the universe at this point so this is where we set intentions and this comes from the magician self so what are the things that you can do to bring in and to invite in actively what it is that you are looking to bring out into the world? It's the same as every single time someone ever, you know, ever writes to me and said, so um, I'd like a new job. Can you do some, can you do a reading to let me know whether I'm going to get a new job? And I'll always say to them, well, first of all, just let me know how many jobs have you applied for? You know, and if they say, oh, I haven't done any, then I'm not going to do the reading for them because the chances they haven't they have created no channel for source spirit whatever you want to call it to send the luck in their direction so that's what we're doing when we set intentions we are asking the universe to send the luck in our direction and we are creating channels for it to come we're doing our bit so it doesn't mean that those are going to be the only things that are going to come and fulfill the dreams that you've set, but it means that you're doing your bit and you're creating the channels. So you would look at that and you would say, okay, what are three actions that I can take? Um, you might do it through the course of the month, you might do it through the course of the week, I like to do it through the course of the week, that I can take to create that momentum around this. So I was thinking about sensuality and pleasure and the um, you know, that's the part of the Rizaz that I want to explore at the moment. And I remember that I've got a voucher for a massage. I'm going to use that voucher for that massage. You know? So create your intentions that are going to invite in and draw in. It can be in very small ways. I was really lucky that I had that voucher, but it can be in very small ways. It can be, I'm going to sit with the Thurisau's room, you know, do some chanting for the Thurisau's room each day, or I'm going to go out there and tackle the thorn bush, you know, that needs to be... Um, cut back you know whatever it is that's sort of going to bring you in that energy that, that passion and that power whatever it is that you have set as your theme your invitation the energy that you want to invite in what the, are the intentions that you want to set then we move to the healer so the healer is important here the healer is important i'm going to offer two pieces to you so the healer is important because the healer is the place of integrity so the magician goes i'm going to do this and the healer goes i'm actually really going to do it you know and and completes what the magician has said you know uh, actually does the thing the magician can you know they're they're great but when we bring the magician and the healer in together they can be more effective you know in that in that sense now the other thing that the healer does and i want to touch on this lightly because we could spend a whole extra session on this and this this particular month I wanted to focus on your your desire, you know, your pleasure, your next um, great steps. But the healer can also offer us, if we think it back back to the steps that I was taking with the seer and the magician, that sense of purpose and offering out into the world. And um, and also, they can support us in things like self care. You know, when we've got a balanced healer, so it might be that the intentions are around like self care. So one of the things that we can do is we can feel into you know what is it that um feels um like broken or out of alignment you know we were looking at the yes weren't we and the no with the seer what feels in alignment and where are the opportunities the healer can say what feels out of alignment and what intentions am i going to set but i'm going to suggest for you this month it just feels right in terms of the energies that are there that our focus is on what the seer and the mystic are are inviting in for you and that the main role of the healer this month is to ensure that those actions are, are completed because that's the luck building piece. You know? Yes, we can get wonderful um, luck from you know, offering our energy out into the world and doing amazing things that way. But more than that, mainly that offers legacy. You know? And we're talking about inviting in luck and being in that place of luck. So if you are absolutely exhausted and still offering your great, magnificent work out into the world, you are a fabulous person, but you're not a lucky person at this point. Okay, So that's why we're sticking with the healer for this month. 
have that place in the process, but they can come earlier if you're thinking more into purpose and you're going, yeah, last month I replenished, it was brilliant and amazing and I'm so bubbling with energy. You might, your healing might come a little bit earlier on. And then finally we have the sage, you know? And the sage is the one who offers the gratitudes, you know, who looks back and says, wow, you know, these are the things I invited, these are the things that I looked at last, um, at the beginning of the lunar cycle with my rune. You know, I chose the, let's choose another rune. Um, I chose the North is room there. And I was like, yeah, there are things that I need to sort of move out of my life. They're not serving me properly. My needs aren't being met in this place. And I've noticed that I'm focusing more on my um, desires because I'm tired. You know, I'm not doing things that are actually good for me. I'm doing things to self-soothe and to numb. And, and the North is room was there sort of burning bright and saying, we need to stop this. And so all of my intentions, I set them around um, self-care, going to bed at the right time, drinking enough water, um, eating more healthily, were the things that I really committed myself to. And I look back and I sort of guess I give the gratitude to myself because I committed to that. Um, and you might do a little bit of a review of how that went and what you'd like to do the following year, um, following month. But you might also look at it and go, oh, and isn't it interesting that that person came forward and said, oh, do you want me to like take the children on this day? Or that um, that really difficult piece of work that I knew I needed to get done uh, suddenly needed to be delayed so I couldn't actually do it. And so it's that gratitude both to yourself for being in integrity and keeping the promises that you made to yourself, which is an important part of Herminia, building the luck spiral. And it's what are the gratitudes that I'm offering out into the world um, to, to, that, that supported me in this intention. And they build that relationship with source. They create the stronger channel so that you're building the luck inside through that self-trust. You know, I completed the things. And you're building that connection with outside so that more luck can flow to you as well. So your seer, your mystic, your magician, your healer, and your sage all have roles to take in the creation of what I call the luck spiral, which we look at more in um, Awaken and in Mastery. But today we were taking a, a very specific look at it in the context of creating um, small, achievable intentions that invite in luck and using our rune of the day or the week or the month to, to, to create a, a theme that we might then pursue and fill in terms of that luck building. And I talked a little bit about how we can work with runic astrology to help us with that as well. So let me know which runes you have pulled. Let me know what lands with you in terms of that um, cycle, that luck building cycle. Let me know if you're planning to join the Starcraft and with the runes challenge, uh, let me know if you are a healer and you are planning to take your next steps in terms of rune healing or um, really reclaiming your power as a healer through the masterclasses and trainings that we have got coming up. Just a reminder that we will not have um, magic in minds for the next um, three weeks through August. I will be back. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you at the very beginning of um, September. It will be. Love and blessings to you all. And I look forward to hearing how this session landed with you.